And we're gonna go back to yesteryear, just so we can kind of show you in this yesteryear type of scope. And we have three different scopes here to kind of show you stuff on. We did promise you Snap-on and OTC, but we're gonna pull an old fluke so scope out. And it's still a great scope, I'm gonna power it up. It's gonna come up, this is the Fluke 98, and you can do this with any fluke scope. Usually I use the 196. But the reason why I wanna show you with this this has nice bars, right, Pierre? Yes, this takes the signal, which is a, a waveform, and puts it into bar graphs form so that it's easier to read, easier to see. So I'm, I'm going to hit OK. I selected six cylinder. I'm all good there. I select six. I hit OK. I'm going to go to scope. Okay, when I go to scope, and this is what you're going to do on your scope, you're going to see. You don't have this unit, don't worry. We just want to show you something, how nice and easy it does it. We're going to go to relative compression on sync. Relative compression on sync. Good if it, shot. If there. it was yeah. synced, we'd be hooking up a wire to some kind of a sync, you know, like a coil or whatever. Right. Some crank signal, something that would make it so it always knew which one was number one. We don't do that now. We don't know which one's number one. We just know if they're all even or not. Well, you know the big thing here, and I gotta, I'm going to put this down over here while you're still... While I'm yakking? Or you could put that box down, but let me show them the connections first, I should say. So I have this blue filter here. This is what Fluke used to make the bar graphs. It takes their AC voltage that they're reading, but filters it very nicely. And I put this on here, it's 10 to 1 filter. And then we have the leads here. The pier is so nice to untangle for me because... Of course, I might have been the one who tangled it to begin with. And we took the clamps off. So here's the negative is the black and the positive. And we're gonna put the red one in the red, in the 16 volt, is gonna go your red lead if that. And we're gonna go in chassis number four. Make sure we're all the way in. Let's give them a good picture of that, Pierre. Yep, there you go. Mm -hmm. And that now, way, that way we have power and ground, right? That is correct. And we're gonna have dim the crank it when I tell them, and we're gonna go over to the scope here. Now, I'm gonna hit okay, and could you see that okay or not? It looks pretty good. Okay, so here's okay. Go ahead, crank. You're good. Now, yeah, it takes a while. You see, the scope doesn't pick it up right away because it has to see enough of these signals so that it uh, gets a reliable signal, basically, to analyze. And what's really nice, again, let's put these two things together. Give me a little wire here. And by the way, we're using an extension OBD2 cable that you can get from OBD2, the number two, cables.com. You can get a 15-foot extension cable. That way you're not tied to the diagnostic link connector. So we're plugged in here, and notice because this car wants to kick it as some fuel, you're not gonna get a 100% accurate reading, but we don't have anything that is more than 10% difference, okay? And we'll do it one more time just to see. Now even though, and I'll tell Eric when to do it, even though we don't know what cylinder it is, right away I know I don't have a bad mechanical condition, correct? So I'm going to repeat the test. Go ahead, Eric. Go ahead. Here go. And there it is. Pretty much the same. We keep coming up with a couple of them that are a little lower. But again, this engine, you would have to run it out of gas. This is a quick way that you could check that mechanically the engine is in good shape, correct? That's right. And so it's not a like doing a real compression test. It's just a quick way to know that you don't have a dead hole, for example. And if well, you a, if you had a misfire condition, for example, wouldn't it be nice to be able to see that, that it does not have a dead hole, that it has basic mechanical integrity? And you know, when we talk about relative compression, relative compression, it's just giving you some idea. It doesn't tell you how many pounds of pressure you have in there. It just tells us they're all equal or one's lower or whatever. You don't throw parts at the car like a mass airflow sensor or any other type of sensors. An oxygen sensor. Why throw parts at it, right Pierre? That's right. When you actually have a mechanical problem. This is why Ford made it mandatory in their IDS. It's on the toolbox. And this is why Toyota Techstream has it in it. And now OTC, when you're in Ford, does a compression test the same way 
that they're doing on the IDS. Pretty nice on a fourth. 